Hello, hello again. Any, uh, anyone who's following my project blog on Tumblr knows that last weekend, not this past weekend, but the last weekend, uh, I was at the NBC uh, Universal Hackathon over at Universal Studios, and the group that I was with came, uh, came up with a system to keep people out of queue lines by giving them tasks and could be uh, and would be rewarded by being able to immediately get on the ride as soon as they completed all these tasks and potentially a couple other goodies. We had a lot of the system, uh, as far as the different parts of the system, we got about 60% of it uh, done in time for the presentation, but from a code and installation perspective, we only got about 30% done. And in the past week, I have, uh, I have completed been working on actually getting this, uh, the rest of the project finished, and this is uh, this is what I've done. So the first uh, the first part of this project is uh, interacting with different stations uh, that transmit their location via iBeacon. So the idea is a, user, a guest gets a particular task and goes over and has to find uh, certain objects which either could just trigger. Uh, an event in the app is a signal that they have uh, found this particular item or it could trigger partic uh, particular events or games inside of the app that they have to which they then have to complete and we had this working on a uh, well I have this working here on a Raspberry Pi we actually uh, for our presentation had the code running uh, identically on the Intel Edison which was one of these sponsors and thank you for the, the free dev board, that's pretty fun. Uh, but we prototyped, uh, I prototyped it on the Raspberry Pi and moved it over to the Edison. And the first one here is our iBeacon. Now, the user would be presented with, uh, uh, the user would be geolocated within a particular area and be prompted if they would want to participate in this. Uh, we designed our app to work in the Harry Potter land in, at Islands of Adventure. They would be presented with a mission and the various tasks they would have to complete. Now, of course, the number of tasks that they have to complete would be, uh, would be directly uh, related to how long the current wait time was. So this is an example of uh, a game that the user might be presented with. And this the, the various stages of this game are dependent on the user finding a particular eye beacon, and what I'm going to demonstrate is what I call a variable state eye beacon. The idea is that uh, a comp it is going to be very rare for a company to use all of the I of the available eye beacons for their given company ID. Their uh, yeah, their company ID, which is in the order of 400, no, oh, it's uh, 40,000 squared. Uh, that's going to be quite a lot. So, the idea is, well, you can have a single station broadcast multiple iBeacons. And the system that I have set up is that a an iBeacon has two different states it can be in. You have a resting state and a triggered state. And so what we're, uh, I'm going to simulate here, the iBeacon is going to turn on, which simulates the guest coming within range of the iBeacon. And then after a couple seconds, it is going to go into its triggered state, wait a, wait a couple more seconds, go back to its resting state, and then turn off. And you'll see the phone asynchronously reacting to these different changes in iBeacon. iBeacon is up, and we see the phone has changed and it's about to go in its triggered state and back down to its resting state and we are now out of simulated out of range and if you looked in the background in the Xcode console you could see that it was in fact reading all of the different iBeacon states uh, that were within range so that section is done. Another uh, one of the uh, one of the other devs on our team 
uh, was working with uh, a way to integrate the Leap Motion, which was another uh, another vendor at the event. But unfortunately, we didn't get to his section in the presentation. And the Leap Motion currently is uh, requires more processing power than is available in the Raspberry Pi. I'd be I'd wonder if it could work in Raspberry Pi too, but I don't have any, and I no longer have access to a Leap Motion. So moving on to the next screen. Once the user has completed all of the required tasks, they would be presented with some kind of message saying, congratulations, you have completed everything that you need to do. Uh, in this case, off to Hogwarts, they can uh, go into the Forbidden Journey ride. We click that, and as you see in the background, uh, as you see in the background, we are now Set, uh, uh, as some people might know, every single iDevice can itself be an iBeacon. And what we're doing here is we are taking the iBeacon string that the phone will broadcast and sending it up to an Azure SQL database via Azure Mobile Services. So it's taking a little while for for it to uh, show that it has in fact sent, and there it is. It is in fact up there, and I can show you. We reload our database contents here, and in fact, here's our ID, time updated, and the text that, that we will be looking for on the next section. So back over, we're going to go to, again, to our Raspberry Pi here. And the, the final uh, segment of this project is the gateway. The idea here is that once the user has completed all the tasks and has sent the Bluetooth packet, the iBeacon packet, that is going to broadcast up to an Azure database, we have these gatekeeper programs that are constantly scanning for uh, guest <laughs> Uh, guest created eye beacons. When it finds one, it qu uh, it queries that found eye beacon packet against the against all the values in that SQL database. If it finds that it is there, we see a uh, it affects the environment. In this case, we're going to see a green light. Uh, waits you know waits ten seconds in this example, and then deletes that found packet from the database so it can only be used once. The use, uh, if the user wants to ride the ride again using this method, they would have to go back and complete all the tasks again. Of course, uh, the number of tasks uh, re reflecting any change of ride time. So I'm going to load that up. Gateway scanner. And it is now looking for iBeacons. Now the uh, the user at the gateway would be, uh, in this case here, presented, hey, approach the fire. Uh, it's kind of one of the, uh, fitting with, it fitting in with the environment. And we have now turned on our iBeacon here. And, and, and very quickly, which is one of the nice things about uh, using SQL databases is we can see the Azure uh, it captured the packet and we see it return true for the following packet with uh, with a given key the light turned green and then deleted uh, deleted the row corresponding to that key now if I were to load up this app again because it is uh, it is constantly scanning for any new iBeacons, and I were to skip the step where we load up the iBeacon. Oh, and let me just show you here. I'm going to reload our database, and it has in fact been removed. So if I try that again, we it cap. We see that it has been captured, but our packet was returned false because it is not in the database and the person would not be give, would not be allowed entry. Okay.
So this uh, this was kind of a lot of fun. I already have one of uh, I already have one blog post uh, or uh, elongated post about getting uh, connecting Azure to the Raspberry Pi using either the the Azure SDK Python SDK that Microsoft provides or using Pi ODBC to be able to directly query our Azure SQL databases. Uh, one is I'm going to put a lot of this code into a GitHub repo, including the iOS app, but I'm going to create a new one that has the identical functionality that isn't all, uh, that doesn't have that UI. It's going to just be a single panel with a couple buttons, and it will functionally act the same. So if you are interested in this kind of program, uh, look for it coming soon. In other news, I have updated both of the Pebble Metar watch faces so that you can now use whatever station you are closest to and it will automatically update itself with, uh, well, as you're moving around. And it's, it's, this is a very nice service called GeoNames uh, that I'm pulling the information from. It's nice, it's free, and I am, you know, it's kind of an ego boost seeing that my parsing program is better than both of the trains than both of the services that I'm pulling this information from so you know that that makes me feel really good so that's what I have for you Ex uh, again expect this code up pretty soon and goodbye